This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Good old mean Gene. God, I love that guy. As Ric Flair would say, mean by God, Gene. Yeah, he was ring. great. Yep. He was great. a good friend. Such a good friend of mine. I'm, we uh, Vince kind of helped to facilitate. Here comes a giant. Uh, Vince kind of helped facilitate uh, Gene going to WCW because Vince had made the decision that he wasn't going to re, re, uh, retain his services, hmm. but he didn't. He didn't want it to get out. So by letting Gene's contract expire, then you have a deal where uh, it's as if. He's being stolen. Oh, so like the Luger at the Mall of America yes. thing. He just shows up type deal. And so, but that way it allowed Gene to get, according to what Vince is telling me, more money or, you know, negotiate a better deal. Sure. From, uh, from WCW because of, of, the, of the timing of the thing. And look, I thought that was a big get for WCW. Uh, you know, Gene was a fixture on the glory years and the biggest years uh, of uh, WWE. And so to get him in WCW was a, was a coup. I thought, I thought it was a good deal. Same thing with Heenan, same mindset with Heenan. He, he let quote unquote, let WCW steal Heenan. And both of them, I mean, I've talked to both of them. God bless them. I wish I could talk to them today, but, I, uh, both those guys got better deals and Oakland got a huge, uh, uh, pop on this, the hotline, the hotline deal. Right. Yeah, he made a lot of money on that deal. So it really was a win-win. Both those guys got better deals. They worked, uh, you know, probably worked fewer dates, fewer, fewer, uh, less time invested. But I thought that was an honorable thing that uh, Vince did. Absolutely. It just you know, I, I, I probably, you know, this is me talking, and it's not official at this point in time in my life. But golly, I would have, I'd have been hard pressed to get rid of both those guys. Cause I like being around them. I'm being selfish, but, uh, I'm glad that we did what we did. They add credence to a show big time. You, you talked yeah. about it best. They were the, the face and voice for so many years, uh, in the WWF and they come here, they still doing a phenomenal job. It's one thing as a wrestler, you come over, you're in your forties or fifties, as far as your in ring work, maybe has taken a, a hit or, or whatever, but as an announcer, there's longer shelf life. If you can still deliver and you, nobody knows that better than you. <laughs> yeah. I'm older than dirt and I'm still hanging around. You're so still, you're still killing it every Wednesday night. So, you know, that's, that's the beauty of the announcer side. You know, you still have those, as long as you have your wits about you and uh, still familiar with the game, you're, you're going to, you're going to do well. And I think Oakland and Heenan just were, were great gets here. And, and here, and speaking of, here we go. Zabisco is gone, right? So we have the issue with him and Hall. He leaves the set and look who, who they brought in. Yeah. But I think, didn't they do that? The Visco called part of the show. Then Heenan came in. That's right. To fin finish it up. I that, believe that's exactly right. So you have Heenan now joining the commentary team. And I always love to see and hear Bobby the Brain. Oh, yeah. Quick wit. Oh, he was the best. Yep. Bobby Heenan might have been the most talented all-around performer I ever worked with. And, I mean, he's in that same conversation with like a lawler, where you had a guy that had multiple skill sets, wrestler, babyface, heel, manager, commentator, whatever. Uh, there's my dear friend, Gene, there's Conan, one of my good buddies, Carlos was a good guy, Buff Bagwell. That's right. Buff That's showing us his stuff. And by yeah. that, I mean, abs and arms. Yeah. And, uh, so it, real quick on to wrap up, Larry, did WWF ever consider bringing Larry back while you were there? Or was that bridge just burned too much? Not as a, uh, uh, a wrestler, uh, was no interest there at that time. And Larry is a wrestler. Uh, I did, uh, pitch Larry to be, uh, a broadcaster. Okay. And, uh, but it didn't go over now. I mean, it, I don't think I even, I don't think I haven't got so far with that was with, with Vance and company that, uh, we brought him in. We may have brought him in for an audition, but I don't remember. Do you remember though? And those for our, our listeners who might not be as familiar. Do you remember what was the beef there between Larry and Vince? Oh. 
I don't know if anything yeah. significant could be. He Who bitched knows? too much about a payoff. Right. Or he didn't want to do a job. Gotcha. The normal shit. Yeah. It's, it's all, Paul, it's always cash and creative. It's one of the two C's. It never changes. It's either I'm not making enough money or I'm, you're, you're shorting me on my money or, uh, you know, I don't like my role. I want to be recast into the soap opera. Gotcha. Yeah, that's generally what it was. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.